Coach, a very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's Dalvin Cook, third year back from Florida State. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV. Called a scouting friend of mine and said, who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you watched a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. They run again on first down. Cook and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, here's Cousins. A oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, these two teams, the Falcons and the Vikings, have met 30 times since the Falcons' inaugural year in the league back in 1966. And the Vikings winning 19 of those games, but maybe the most memorable game between the two was a Falcons victory. That was in the NFC Championship game back in January of 99. Gary Anderson missed a field goal to potentially win it at the end of regulation, and then the Falcons would get the victory in OT 30-27, to and they were off to the Super Bowl. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and it's third down. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Josh Doxson's got it complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 41-yard line. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route-running savvy. First and ten, Cousins completes it right side to Doxon. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Cousins again. He'll take his shot for the end zone. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. On play action, Cousins. Flush down right, and he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. 
Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. Cousins on first down. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Vic Beasley making it look easy, cruising in for the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. They'll try to capitalize on play number 11 of this opening drive. Third and goal. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. That's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like, whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. A carry for Devontae Freeman, who missed most of last season. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Tackle made that time by Anthony Barr. And Falcons fans everywhere excited that Devontae Freeman is back on the field wearing number 24 in the red and black. Remember, he went down in week two in 2018 with an injury and didn't return. They're hoping to see the form that led him to 1,000-yard seasons in 2015 and 2016. On second down, it's Freeman, and he's got some space here. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one covers 29 yards, first down. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. Here's the second year back from Southern Miss, Edo Smith. A nice opening right away as he'll maneuver his way up to the 32-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Brings up second and a yard at the Vikings' 32-yard line. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Ripley, Ripley, Ripley. 
Now they'll throw it with Ryan. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 12 yards there and a first down. 59, ready. Right, 25. It's our time. It's our time. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the running game. It's Freeman. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. The running game's played a huge part in getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone. Keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. 21. Slow. Slow. Take three. 218. Chop. What is that? 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football as they go to work on a first and goal. taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. They'll look to run with Freeman. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons have taken the lead. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? Brian Sangster point up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. And after the touchdown, here's Bryant now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They finished off their opening drive of the campaign with a field goal on the last drive. Now they'll search for a touchdown here on this goal around. First and ten. He's got it complete to James right side. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Call that a very strong gain of 24. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball will get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. So don't say nothing. Cook. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, 
Creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 40 now on second down, Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe defense. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Brady Jarrett breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And complete right side to Cook. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it in, throw it, go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. They were successful last time finding the end zone on their opening drive of the season, and they'll get another shot here with a first and ten. Ryan, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Harrison Smith, and his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. The sack coming from Adrian Claiborne off the edge. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the Toronto. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. 
And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. We remind you that coming up in two minutes, we'll again head down to visit with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando back for another year. He'll have scores from around the NFL here on this opening week. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Vikings are going to retake the lead. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And that'll make this a six-point game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. A tale of two extremes already in this game. A touchdown pass on their opening drive, followed by an interception last time out. Now, it sounds like things balance out, right? What's that, that mythological thing that we do? If you have a candy bar, have a diet soda with it, it balances it out. Then we know that's not really true, right? Because the interception, that sting lingers a little bit longer. Got to come out now and put together some nice plays. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. From the gun, it's Ryan. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. it to Julio Jones a good pick up there 21 yards and now he's really knocking on the door for 700 that is career catch 699 so from the 36 now first and 10 from the shotgun Ryan he rifles one that's intercepted Picked off around the 27. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. They start the drive with Cook. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. From the 39, Cousins. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Throwing. Cousins looking for Thielen, but it's intercepted. Devondre Campbell, the linebacker, picks it. And he will score! Touchdown, Falcons! Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and that will give him the lead here as we get on towards halftime. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. 
The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. To throw, Cousins. And this is Cook with a grab. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So we are at halftime here in the opener of the 2019 regular season. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, we'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Yeah, let's go second. Now well, Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Push him back. On third down, Ryan. And he's got Sanu. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Hey, box truck, box truck. Here's Ryan to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. And that takes us from second to third down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary, it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to him. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task.
Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got, the yeah. we, got the we, got the we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And now it's third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Deion Jones. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone and throw into the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Flag comes in as they got him down via the face mask, and that'll give him even better starting position. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. There for the sack, Everson Griffin. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Mike, Mike, 55. Check, 55, Mike. Hey, watch the slam. Throwing on second and long. Ryan, there goes a deep ball, in zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And that is incomplete. The one with the dive look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. 11 yards there, first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. 
They've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They come out here in the eye. Second and goal from the one. On the keeper, here's Ryan. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Matt Ryan scoring on the sneak from a yard out. And the Falcons have once again taken the lead. Bryant's extra point up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Trying to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Second and 10 at the 35-yard line. Jahan, what is he? 27. Check the out. Check the out. Check the out. Where's Jahan? Looking to throw on second down. Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they, And he's going to be taken down. They sack him on what will be the final play of quarter number three. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. This is taken at about the 14. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Again, they'll run with Freeman. 
two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dime. Patrolling the passing lanes. From the gun, Ryan looking deep for Julio. And got his man complete. Julio Jones all alone. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones. 76 yards. And the Falcons push further out in front. Well, we've seen these two, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, connect quite a few times over the years. It never gets old. It never gets old. Well, maybe for the defense it does, yeah. but not for us who are watching it. And Julio, every time he steps on the field, you can just about mark him down for 100 yards. That's about his career average per game. But think about this. Getting in the end zone has always been a, a struggle for him. He gets the big yardage, but he doesn't get the touchdowns. Not this time. No matter how many people were kicked in coverage, he found a way to beat it. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. No doubt to tell my offense right here. The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, there's going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Tech McKinley made his way into the backfield. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. And the pressure gets to him again. Tech McKinley able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down, you bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 37-yard line. Freeman, he's been busy today. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to make it third down and ten. Watch left, watch left. Watch screen, watch screen. Hey, exit. 
Get ready up. Operating from the go. Ryan. And he's got a man, Calvin Ridley. A nice pickup there. 18 yards. First down, Falcons. Big hook up there. Forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. This is Freeman on first and 10. Making the stop there, Daniil Hunter. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellows up front in order to bring this one home. From the 44, Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones. Already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the Falcons push further out in front. Bryant tacks on the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Yeah, after the touchdown, here's Bryant now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Now Cousins, and this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Johnson was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Now Cousins. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. Cousins. This is Johnson. He's got it. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Now, no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. And Rudolph has it left side. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That one goes for 24 yards. Cousins again. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by DeMonte Casey. And a good return here as he takes it up past the 30-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And they will take a knee here.
Shout out to Blue 80. Black 25. All day, defense. All day. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And with that, our journey begins, Charles. Week one in the books. Going to be a great season. Oh, man, so much to look forward to. Isn't it nice to get a really good game right out of the gate? Preseason behind us. All these games count now, don't they? Yeah, this is the exciting time with just one week gone and plenty of weeks to come. So for Atlanta, not much to complain about here. They come in and steal a victory in a tough place to play on a Sunday night. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Lambeau to take on the Packers. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.